Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to my course, uh, as, uh, Aspects of Biochemical Engineering. And uh, we are in the last class, I was discussing of activated sludge process. Now, if you look at the biological process that uh, where, where cells, uh, living cells are growing, they usually grow in two different modes. One is aerobic, another is anaerobic mode. The aerobic uh, uh, last uh, activated slash process basically it is the aerobic fermentation process and uh, now I shall discuss the anaerobic fermentation process. Now uh, I told you that uh, this activated slash process is used for wastewater treatment purpose. Now uh, uh, any industry that uh, whenever they submit any kind of proposal, uh, uh, so but they have to show that uh, that whatever waste material they are generating that should be properly treated so that the environment should not be polluted. So uh, we, we, we have found out that 10 percent of the total investment of the industry that usually go for the wastewater treatment purpose. Now if you look at the history of wastewater treatment process that most of the industry when they invest the money for wastewater treatment process they considered there is no return from that wastewater treatment process. Whatever money is spent with the, that process that will go away in waste. But uh, due to the invention, due to the uh, due to this anaerobic digestion process, now it is possible to get some revenue, revenue from this particular process, some money we can earn from this particular process. So this is so this is a very interesting process through which uh, the lot of industry they are operating the process and and, uh, and, and I, I want to mention here that uh, in the western country particularly if we visit uh, Germany and Sweden you will find that some buses they are operating by using the biogas and biogas is nothing but it mostly contains methane and carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide you can easily remove through the uh, absorption process and then uh, this methane we can use for the operation of vehicles for as, as, a, as a particularly I can tell you in the distillery industry they they required lot of heat energy for the distillation of alcohol and it has been found that if you if by using this anaerobic digestion process the 50 percent energy that is required for the distillation process that can be meet from this uh, from the uh, wastewater treatment by anaerobic digestion process. So with this small introduction let us let me go to the anaerobic digestion process. The anaerobic digestion process if you look at it is uh, it is uh, co comprises of series of biological process in which the microorganism break down the biodegradable uh, material in absence of uh, oxygen. So you know that uh, this is anaerobic fermentation means in absence of oxygen only I want to highlight here that that organism when grow aerobically they require their grow their amount of cell mass formation will be very high. But when they grow under anaerobic condition amount of cell mass formation will be very less. So, um, so in other way uh, indirectly I can tell you the, that uh, that uh, the nutrient requirement for the anaerobic uh, fermentation process will be much less as compared to aerobic process because since the aerobic process your cell mass growth is uh, about 10 times as compared to anaerobic process. So your uh, nutrient requirement for the aerobic uh, fermentation process much high as compared to anaerobic fermentation process. So uh, now here all reactions is occur in absence of oxygen um, and this is one of the oldest fermentation process. This is the oldest fermentation process that stabilize the sludge obtained by activated sludge process. Now I was discussing in the last lecture that activated sludge process. Now uh, we should remember that you know I told you that 
when you talk about uh, this uh, this uh, soluble organics we are converting to cell mass and carbon dioxide the carbon dioxide that is going out of the system but what is the cell mass that remain in the system that uh, when you we cannot throw it out because it contains lot of nutrient that as soon as you throw it out then all the bacteria other bacteria present in the atmosphere they will try to grow on this solid material and degrade the material so your environment will be polluted so this sludge uh, we can do to be further treated now this slide either you pass through the incineration process so you can produce lot of heat the problem is that it contains a very good amount of moisture so you have to remove the moisture before you do you 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 burn the burn this material but best way of treating this material if you pass it through the anaerobic digestion process so that this organic material can be converted to methane and carbon dioxide so this is exactly what we have mentioned here this is the oldest process used for stabilization of the sludge obtained from the activated sludge process this process capable of treat solids as well as the liquid waste this is widely as a source of renewable energy the process produces a biogas consisting of methane and carbon dioxide and other trace gases the trace gases means since the anaerobic we know the anaerobic fermentation process that you know dissolve oxygen concentration of the media is not required in the absence of molecular oxygen the we know for the respiration of the microorganism respiration of the living cells always they required the oxygen now question comes from where they get the oxygens they get the oxygen from the compound like sulfate nitrate nitrite the sulfate when they use as a source of nitrogen the sulfate will be converted to sulfide and ultimately is converted to sulfide and h2s so you know that h2s uh, uh, gas that is produced in this system so one of the problem that we have with this biogas generation process is the h2s present in the gas though it is very trace amount but it may causes the um, may, may, may may affect the material of construction of the pipeline mainly two groups of microflora are present one you call uh, this is bacteria and archaea this is the present and uh, now let us see that what are the major steps involved in the in this anaerobic digestion process the first uh, what we have the complex organic material here this is the influent and then it comprises of what polymeric material this is protein is a polymer of amino acid carbohydrate this is a polymer of uh, glucose and uh, maybe uh, monomer dimer mon pentose uh, hemicellulose cellulose might be there then lipid we have uh, the esters of uh, fatty acid and alcohol and this when hydrolyzed it produces the amino acid and sugar you know that is sol what do, what do you call this is the insoluble material and when you convert it to the amino acid or sugar we call it solubilization of this process and this process we call hydrolysis and this is the hydrolyzed material then converted to the different uh, different uh, volatile fatty acid like acetic acid butyric acid lactic acid so you know different type of acid formation is there and this higher acid again converted to acetic acid before it produces methane and carbon dioxide and in this process this is acid generation process is produce hydrogen also and this in combination produce the methane and carbon dioxide and finally we call it biogas so basically if you look at this process it is four major steps are involved one is called hydrolysis process hydrolysis is basically liquefaction process and the acidogenesis process that means uh, during the acidogenesis process this uh, different uh, organic acid volatile fatty acid formation take place like butyric acid acetic acid lactic acid uh, fumaric acid the, the different type of acid formation is there propionic acid formation is there and this uh, higher acid they convert it to methane via acetic acid formation what you call acidogenesis and this acid when acetic acid we know what is the formula of acetic acid chtcwh this is converted to methane and carbon dioxide so this is how it is produced now classification of uh, of anaerobic digestion technologies uh, this can be 
we can we can we can classify it at the high rate and low rate. High rate, uh, this you know that uh, uh, that hydraulic retention time is uh, is less than a solid retention time, and the treatment of the waste water. This is the low solid uh, content. The total solid is four to ten percent is used. Use uh, the biogas settler, anaerobic baffle reactor, anaerobic filter, outflow, anaerobic sludge bunker reactor. These are the different reactors is used. But in case of low rate reactor, where no mass, uh, no mass retention is there, the hydraulic retention time equal to solid retention time. So here the treatment is slurry or manure or wastewater. Mainly the solid material we use. This is contains the uh, the two type of uh, solid. Uh, one case the total solid concentrate less than 20 percent, another is the more than 20 percent. So different type of anaerobic biogas digester that is used here. The batch and fed batch process, plug flow reactor, continuous start tank reactor is used. And here in more than 20 percent you have anaerobic biogas digester, batch process, plug flow reactor, continuous start tank reactor is used. This is the how the how we can classify it, this uh, anaerobic digester process. Now uh, we have uh, we, uh, different anaerobic digesters commercially available throughout the world, and uh, this is the upflow anaerobic sludge bunker reactor. Upflow sludge bunker reactor appears to be the very efficient reactor. Now what is that reactor? This is the reactor is like this, and uh, so here. We have we 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 have have some kind of sludge that here we we have this. So this is we can we can take out the gas. We can take out the liquid from here. So this is the liquid we have. So here sludge formation is there. This is feed we have, and this is the gas will coming out from the top. And uh, due to the high concentration of cell mass here, when the feed is going like this, then it converted to immediately methane and carbon dioxide. And main purpose is that this conical the things you know particle they will strike one another and ultimately it will strike here it will it will come in the this direction again one particle strike this then ultimately and come in the and since it is coming in the um, uh, the bottom direction then all the sludge slowly slowly this accumulated at the bottom of the of the reactor and time to time you have to drain out the sludge because. We have to find out what is the optimum height of the sludge for getting the maximum rate of reaction. So this is largely used. This is how it looks. Then covered anaerobic lagoon digester. This is how it is operated. Plug flow reactor. Here there complete mixed digester. This is there, and dry digester system and fluidized bed reactor is there. So these are the different. They are designed based on the organic waste stream tanks such as the manure. Municipal waste water treatment, industrial waste water treatment, municipal solid waste, some commercially available digesters are included. Now, applications of anaerobic digester, there are several. This is the input. Input is uh, maybe energy crops, maybe manure, maybe industrial waste, maybe the source separated the organic uh, organics or municipal solid waste. The restaurant we have food industry, food waste. That waste water treatment from the plant sludge, this pass through the anaerobic digestion process, and then whatever methane is produced, that can be used for the generation of electricity. And we have biogas. We can use as the running the vehicles. We can use as the renewable fuel. If the digested material can be used as the bio fertilizer, and uh, and and reusable usable for water and compost. This is largely used for composting purpose. Now, if you look at the digester, you have uh, several section in the digester. This is the, uh, the and you know, this portion is very in, in, in interesting. The reason is that that in this portion, that you know, active digester sludge. The most of the organism they are active in this particular portion. Now, here the digested material that we that now we what we have observed, we have uh, several anaerobic digester plant located throughout the world. And when big big digester we operated, major problem is that long time operation. Maybe after after several month of operation, they will find that this digested material that accumulates at the bottom of the reactor. 
and there they settle in a very thick sludge and very difficult to separate it out. So, a time will come this sludge will keep on rising and if it rise 50 percent then you have to stop the operation and then we shall have to take the material out to regenerate the process again. So, this is very important this is superintendent layer that, uh, that we have and gas is removed like this. Sometimes we have here some kind of cross formation is there and we if, uh, if we use some kind of agitation or you know we scrap the surface then gas will escape out we can we can increase the gas production. This material can be used as the digested material is as the bio fertilizer. Now, process design uh, that uh, includes that uh, the liquefaction I already explained, acidification also explained, acidification I also explained that higher organic molecules like butyric acid, propionic acid they converted to acetic acid first then carbon dioxide uh, as well as carbon dioxide and hydrogen then to methane and carbon dioxide and methanation mostly the uh, acetic acid or you know methanol they converted to or carbon dioxide and hydrogen they convert to methane. Um, um, so, in the in case of liquid waste last three st steps are important because in case of solid waste all the four steps are, are, are uh, plays very important role. Now, if you look at this you know this is very important the process design of this process that a concept of mean cell residence time is used to describe the process design of which we already explained. Uh, that what is called mean cell residence time and uh, design is similar to the activated sludge process, respiration, oxidation, end product of anaerobic digestion are methane and carbon dioxide. The equation is V into this, this is very important. Now, let me explain what the, what is mean by that. Now, Q, Q0 or Q, Q or Q0 is same that is incoming flow rate of the digester because how would later, let us assume this is the digester and this is Q0 am I right or Q and this is the S0 is the, so what is the input sub, uh, amount of substrate input in the system Q0 into S0 am I right. And then E is the efficiency of the waste utilization normally range from 0 0.6 to 0.9 percent. So, when the question comes how what is the percentage of this uh, b b organic matter that can be converted they can be uh, can be utilized. 60 percent to 90 percent. So, E is that factor and then I told you when it converted a part also converted to the cell mass and that remain in the system. So, that is to be deducted am I right. If you deduct that then this is the actual the beauty that is removed. Now, if you multiply it by 0.35 you will get the volume of methane produced. Now, question comes how that figure has come let me explain that. Now, let us assume this uh, this here that uh, that uh, uh, what is what is that that uh, one mole of glucose one mole of glucose produce three moles of carbon dioxide and three moles of methane. So, this is 180 and this is 48 because 3 into 16 is uh, 48 am I right. And uh, so, uh, so, now if you if you con convert it into BOD, the 3 moles of methane required 6 moles of oxygen to convert it carbon dioxide and water. So, if you if you have the ratio that uh, that kg methane produced per kg of BOD, how you can write the 48 gram uh, methane you can produce for 180 grams of glucose and 190 grams of oxygen required for the oxidation of this methane that is 192 divided by 180. That means, uh, the, the, the thing is the coming that uh, that uh, 0.25 kg of methane produced per kg U of beauty removed am I right. Now, now we know at NTP at NTP 1 mole uh, 1 gram mole of the gas is equivalent to 22.4 liters am I right. Now, if you if you put that equation here then we will find this will be equal to 0.35 cubic meter per uh, methane and uh, cubic meter methane. So, so uh, what uh, what I what I what I want to tell now in this equation you see that this is the amount of beauty removed 
So, we know this is per kg of beauty removed. So, you can easily find out the how much volume of methane is produced 0.35 you can find out and if you if you if you multiply it by 0.25 then you can get the the kg of methane produced per kg of beauty removal so this is how you can calculate that now in the in the process design another parameter very important that uh, what is the biological solids because if you look at the mass of biological solids synthesized daily that is rate of cell mass formation. How you can calculate that in the q into s 0 because I told you that you can remember that uh, q 0 into s 0 into substrate conversion am I right. And uh, if you multiply this that uh, that is the uh, actual amount of substrate that is converted. Now, if you multiply by y observed x, uh, x by s observed then what will happen you will get what is the exact amount of cell mass that is produced this is exactly that is a, this is capital Y this is capital Y uh, the x by s that is Y stands for that is the yield coefficient. Okay. Now, this is the typical uh, different kinetic constants that we have as far as anaerobic digestion is constant concerned the, um, the domestic sludge that uh, yield coefficient and uh, mu, mu d is the specific death rate of the cells that varies from this range and typical value is this. Okay. In case of domestic sludge in fatty acid we have this uh, this typical value is like this and carbohydrate it is 0 0.024 to and 0 0.030 and proteins is 0 0.0, uh, 0 0.075 and 0 0.016. Now, uh, if you consider the uh, the mean cell residence time using the uh, design continuous uh, start tank reactor, then we find that uh, 8 degree centigrade the theta c value that is the mean cell residence time will be 11, uh, but the suggested is 28 days. Now, in case of 24 it is 8 and this is 20. In case of uh, that 30 degree centigrade is 6 and it is 14. So, what I want to mean as you increase the temperature your kinetics is better because your rate of conversion of the uh, gas will be more high uh, will be higher as compared to low temperature your, uh, your organism will be uh, activated because you know that we, we find that reaction kinetics is uh, based, uh, in parameters improve as you increase the temperature because we know RNAs equation that how the rate constant depends on the temperature. So, this is the, this we observe in case of particular anaerobic digestion process temperature plays very vital role and uh, here I want to tell one particular matter that uh, that you might be knowing that uh, that in India we have millions of biogas plant that is located in uh, different rural areas and also China also they have millions of biogas plant in the rural area because if you look at the social structure of China and India is more or less same and uh, b b because our standard of living is not as, uh, as good as the western country and that is why this process largely implemented in India and as well as China. Now, what we observe that you know that in case of China that uh, the, with this process is quite successful as compared to India. The reason is that that uh, in the China they have uh, they have they have certain uh, analytical devices that how this uh, small uh, this uh, biogas plant can be operated. They uh, they have the monitoring system of pH. Now I can tell you the anaerobic digester is usually governed by two type of organism. One is acidogens and methanogens. The when you when both the organism present in the reactor. So, both acid conversion and acid to methane conversion take place. Now, if there is a uh, you, if the rate of acid formation is high as compared to rate of methane generation, then what will happen? The acid concentration in the reactor will increase. Now, as the acid concentration increases, the pH of the reactor will go down. As the pH goes down, the rate of uh, methane uh, formation will be reduced significantly. So, this is the major problem. So, those uh, those things you have to take care. Another thing is that the temperature 
because uh, we, because we know that uh, we are, though we are in the tropical country, but during winter our temperature reduces as low as uh, 20, 15 to 20 degrees centigrade. So naturally, our temperature of the digester, we do if we don't have any kind of heating system, and though we know that uh, the biochemical reaction is a exothermic in nature, but you know the temperature will go down. Am I right? As the temperature goes down, then your rate of reaction also decreased uh, significantly. That is the major problem that we have with the anaerobic digestion process. So, uh, so uh, temperature is a very important criteria that we shall have to uh, maintain. Now, this is the this is the uh, biomethanation pilot plan that uh, I personally work at IIT, IIT uh, Delhi, and here we use the distillery uh, effluent. Uh, this is the this is the acidogenic reactor, acidogens, genic reactor, and this is methanogens, genic reactor. Okay, and this is the feed tank that we have. So what do we do? We can put the distillery effluent here. Effluent here, and then we we can we can continuously pass through this, and then. After that is the, though you can size, you can easily find out the size of the uh, acidogenic reactor is much small as compared to methanogenic reactor. The reason is that acidogenic uh, organism they work very fast as compared to methanogenic. The methanogenic reactor is a very slow growing organism as compared to acid acidogenic organism. So here the reaction is since it is very fast, the rate of acid formation will be very fast. It required very small reactor, and here methanogenic reactor is very time consuming, slow growing. So we have to keep the bigger reactor. So this is how this we operated this reactor. Now we have uh, we have uh, taken one problem that you know the. the they estimate the size of the digester required to treat the sludge from a preliminary treatment plant design 338,000 uh, cubic meter per day of waste water. Find out the volume uh, loading and they estimate the percentage stabilization and amount of gas produced. From the waste water to be treated, it, uh, it has been found that the quantity of dry solid and beauty removal um, uh, is uh, removed is uh, 0.15 kg per cubic meter and 0.14 kg per cubic meter respectively. Assume that sludge contain 95 percent moisture and has specific gravity of 1.02. Other pertinent design parameter is given. Hydrolysis of the reactor is continuous flow start tank and uh, solid detention time is 10 days. The E is the 0.8 and waste contain adequate nitrogen and phosphorus for biological growth. And y x by s is 0 0.05, mu d is 0 0.03, the inverse, and constant are all constant as temperature as 35 degrees centigrade. So this is the problem that we have. Let us see how we can solve this problem. Now, first we shall have to find out the sludge volume. Am I right? Now, how you can find out the sludge volume? So this is the um, uh, what is the so content? The dry solid. This is the 15 kg per cubic meter, am I right? So, 15 kg per cubic meter and this is the, so this is the volume of uh, that uh, liquid is coming in. So, if you multiply that you will get uh, the amount of sludge that is uh, that you know entering into the system. The density of the sludge is 1.02. So, if you multiply it by factor and um, So, you will get uh, this uh, and another another factor that is given the 95 percent moisture content then 5 percent is the uh, total solid am I right. So, if it is like this then we can we can find out the volume of the, uh, the sludge is uh, 118 111 point eight cubic meter per day. Now, BOD loading we can similarly we can calculate this is this is the BOD 0.414 kg per cubic meter. This is the amount of this uh, liquid that is entering uh, per kg. That is, uh, this is per day, per day. This has some mistake is there. So you correct it, and this is this you can find out. This is uh, this is 
5320 kg per day. Now, digested volume, how you can calculate? This is Q, uh, Q is the, this is volume of the digested and the solid retention time is the 10 days. So, if you multiply it by this, that uh, we can, we can find out the volume of the reactor. So, uh, and then volumetric loading, how you can calculate? This is the amount of sludge that is coming in and this is the volume of the reactor. Uh, volume of the reactor. So, amount of uh, solid material that is putting per cubic meter of the reactor per day is equal to uh, that you can calculate very easily. Now, uh, if you want to find out the cell mass formation, this, this is the equation that we have and if uh, we have all the values in this uh, problem, if we put that we find it is 163.7 kg per uh, day. Now, we have the percentage stabilization, how you can calculate that uh, this is the, uh, this is the uh, beauty that is removed and this is the cell mass that is the beauty equivalent to the cell mass. So, actual removal of the beauty is this and this is the uh, Q into S0 is the total beauty that is being put in the system. So, if you do that, you can easily get the percentage stabilization of the solid material that you can easily do that. And then, Finally, we want to find out that what is the amount of gas produced. So, we have already developed this equation that 0.35 into e, e q is 0 and 1.42 into p x all the parameters is already estimated. So, we can find out uh, 1408 cubic meter um, methane produced per day. Now, if the methane contains, uh, if the gas contains 67 percent of, uh, of, uh, of methane, then we can find out the total gas produced about 2102 cubic meter per day. So, we can, we can, we can estimate this very easily. So, uh, so, in this particular lecture, I try to discuss the anaerobic digestion process. The anaerobic digestion process is considered the most useful process because here we can generate lot of uh, methane and this methane can be uh, generated both from the solid as well as from the liquid waste. And, uh, and this, uh, I told you this process uh, has a four different steps. One is called uh, hydrolysis, then acidogen acidification, then acidification, then methanation. This is usually governed by two by group of microflora. One is called acidogens and this methanogens. Purpose of acidogens is convert the organic material to organic acid and purpose of methanogens is to convert the organic acid to methane and carbon dioxide. And we, I told you the acidogens uh, grow much faster as compared to methanogens. So, size of the acidogenic reactor will be much smaller as compared to methanogenic reactor. So, and uh, we try to uh, so, uh, find out uh, the amount, we find out, derive some kind of equation, how to find out that uh, volume of methane or volume of gas produced per um, uh, kg of the per, per kg of the uh, beauty remove or uh, from the digester that we can easily calculate. So, one problem we try to solve and we, we show you that how this can be estimated. Thank you.